Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems, Policy and Interoperable Health IT, Lecture D. This unit will cover the following learning objectives. 1. List and discuss the impact of key health interoperability-related topics in healthcare legislation. 2. Identify and discuss how the Meaningful Use Program and the ONC Certification Programs have impacted interoperable health IT. And 3. Assess and leverage Meaningful Use, ONC Certification, and other health IT policy activities to facilitate interoperability. This lecture reflects on the impact of regulations to health IT and suggests how knowledge of their impact in a particular environment can help you make strategic decisions regarding interoperability projects. Imagine you wanted to solve a problem that required interoperability. Perhaps it was related to care coordination, population health, patient engagement, or value-based care. Perhaps you work for a health IT vendor or a consulting firm engaged by an eligible hospital or an eligible provider. Or perhaps you work for a non-eligible provider, a healthcare facility, or a health information exchange, or a public health department, or an insurance company. Knowledge about the EHR Incentive Program, otherwise known as Meaningful Use, the ONC Certification Program, and other health IT policy can help you make decisions because you will know some useful facts about the people and the systems you want to connect and what regulations will be motivating and controlling them. Here is an example of how you could leverage knowledge about meaningful use. Imagine it is July 1, 2016, and Dr. Jones has a private practice that has an older patient population. He would like you, as a consultant, to improve his ability to manage the care of his COPD patients. You have determined that his practice participates in meaningful use, has an ONC 2014 certified EHR, and is automatically sending continuity of care documents, or CCDAs, to a local hospital when a patient is referred there. However, it is not yet sending CCDAs to any specialists nor has his practice accepted any CCDAs because they do not have to. You find out that most of the specialists that receive Dr. Jones's COPD patients use an ONC 2014 certified EHR, and some have attested to meaningful use. This means that for those specialists that have such EHRs, they do have some capability to accept and send CCDAs. Also, they should have attested that they sent patient summaries to the next provider of care for more than 10% of patients if they have attested to stage 2. Therefore, you might recommend a care coordination strategy based on implementing CCDA exchange with the specialists, with the priority on those that are already meaningful users. Now there are some basic facts about meaningful use that are helpful to know when solving interoperability problems. One. Most eligible hospitals, or EHs, and eligible providers, EPs, have attested for meaningful use. However, ineligible providers and healthcare facilities are not required to meet MU requirements. Of those that are eligible, some are further behind in attesting to the requirements, and some may have stopped progressing. If an EH or an EP achieved MU, it does not mean that the objectives were optimized to meet MU in a tight time frame, and so additional work may be required for the objectives to be truly meaningful. Examples of additional work could be optimizing workflows, manual steps for sending summary of care documents, formatting, and or adding data in a CCDA to be optimal for the receiver, and selected clinical quality measures were easier to implement or were from a limited subset from the EHR vendor. In general, most EHs and EPs in 2016 and beyond provide more than 50% of their patients with the ability to access their data via a portal or an API and can send electronic care summaries for more than 10% of the transitions of care or referrals using the CCDA standard. Some have experience using secure messaging to communicate with patients. They are all likely to be e-prescribing and performing medication reconciliation. 
Additionally, they are likely to be actively engaging with their public health authority. However, it is less common to find registry interfaces among eligible hospitals and eligible providers because they are new. Also, it is less common for clinical quality measures to be submitted electronically, although this would be a requirement. Those who are submitting clinical measures electronically are likely doing it for other regulatory requirements and or other quality programs. The electronic submission of such measures would likely increase in 2018. Just because meaningful use was achieved at a particular site does not mean that it will be easy to leverage. Providers' implementations may not be optimal, and there are variances in how MU has been achieved. Therefore, just because a site has attested to an MU stage does not mean that you will be able to reuse the interoperability functions without extra work. On the other hand, hospitals and doctors are motivated by laws like MACRA and PIPACA and regulations like IPPS and MIPS that encourage a value-based care model and better management of a population of patients over the care continuum. So this means they have reasons beyond meaningful use why they need to start doing more and more interoperability, such as sending care summaries between providers, providing patients with data access, and sending secure messages, to name a few. If you have an interoperability project you would like to accomplish, it would be smart if you can align your goals so that they are congruent with policy-motivated activities. You might be able to accomplish both your goals as well as help accomplish the goals of these policy-motivated activities. For example, a hospital wants to reduce admissions for population health and quality of care. But this reduction is also required as part of the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as PPACA. So not only is important to leverage your knowledge of meaningful use, ONC certification, and health IT policy, it is also important to ask questions when working on an interoperability problem. You may want to speak with the vendor and also ask for a demo, and you may also want a walkthrough from the organization that you are working with. On this slide are examples of questions to ask the organization. What is your current MU stage and future plan? What certified technology do you use? What choices were made? For example, which optional objectives and or clinical quality measures were selected? How do you meet your threshold for health information exchange, transition of care objective? How did you meet your threshold for the view, download, transmit objective? What about MU was especially challenging for you? So not only is it important to know about health IT policy and meaningful use, it is also important to know about the technology, especially the certification requirements from ONC. Most hospitals and doctor's offices have certified technology, but it could range from being certified by ONC 2011 requirements, which should be rare, by ONC 2014 requirements, or by ONC 2015 requirements, which would start in 2017. However, all certified technology has additional technology beyond what is required for meaningful use that might also be useful. For example, ONC 2015 certification requirements include functionality that might be useful for EHRs in the long-term care setting. Perhaps you see an opportunity to use a function that was certified but not required for meaningful use. The great thing about meaningful use is that it made providers use the certified technology. If certification capabilities exist that are not required by meaningful use, they unfortunately might not be implemented and used. When leveraging additional certified features, Proceed with caution, because they might not be used by vendor customers often, or by the eligible hospital or eligible provider. Additionally, the feature may be hard to configure and or not integrate well into workflows. It is essential to ask the vendor questions, get demos, and proceed cautiously. Again, knowing about meaningful use, health IT policy, and ONC certification 
are very important for planning strategy and making decisions regarding interoperability. The table on this slide summarizes the kind of information you would need from various stakeholder perspectives to help implement or advance interoperability. In general, it is helpful to know the MU status and ONC certification status of your organization and other stakeholders in coordination of care. Then you can use this information in making interoperability decisions. Note that knowing the MIPS or Merit-Based Incentive Payment System status of a clinician is also helpful. With a difficult task, such as implementing meaningful use, it is crucial to leverage existing projects and plan for the future. Eligible providers and eligible hospitals will be adopting ONC 2015 certified technology and moving towards Stage 3. Additionally, non-eligible providers and healthcare facilities may also adopt certified technology. It is also vital to keep abreast of the policy landscape because there may be requirements motivated by policy, such as MACRA, PIPACA, and ONC Standards Advisory Guidance. Therefore, efficiency, effectiveness, and chances for success are more likely if there is strategic alignment of goals and priorities with those from policy. This concludes Lecture D of Policy and Interoperable Health IT. In this lecture, we focused on how you could assess meaningful use and apply it to real-world problems dealing with population health, care coordination, value-based care, and patient-centered care through interoperability. It is very helpful to have knowledge about meaningful use, ONC technology certification, and health IT policy. In addition, you will need to gather information, ask questions, leverage existing projects, and align goals with policy for successful strategic planning and decision-making for interoperability. This concludes Unit 7, Policy and Interoperable Health IT. The summary of this unit is Congressional Acts, Federal Regulations, and Key Reports have made and continue to make a huge impact on the expansion and shape of health IT and healthcare interoperability. The Meaningful Use Program significantly impacted interoperability by laying the foundation in Stage 1 through EHR implementation and standards adoption. Interoperability continued to be a priority for meaningful use through Stage 2 and modified Stage 2, and especially in Stage 3, which was released in October 2015. The specific objectives are operationalized through interoperability, but advanced patient-centered care, care coordination, and the ONC vision of a learning health system. There have been and there continue to be challenges with interoperability, but having knowledge about meaningful use, health IT policy, and ONC certification requirements is advantageous to help achieve and advance interoperability among various organizations and stakeholders.